Now, once again, Raymond Arroyo. Welcome back to the World Over Live. Early in the morning of August 29th, 2005, Hurricane Katrina struck the U.S. Gulf Coast. It brought torrential rains, 140 mile per hour winds, and stretched over a 400 mile span. And though the eye of the storm hit Mississippi, Katrina broke the levees of New Orleans, swamped 80 percent of the town, and nearly destroyed one of America's great cities. During the last 10 years, the recovery and the rebuilding of the Crescent City and the Gulf Coast has been constant. After billions of federal dollars, the whole country is now wondering, what's the condition of New Orleans? And where does it go from here? I recently sat down in New Orleans with political strategist, author, and NOLA resident, Mary Madeline, at her home in her adopted hometown. We talked about the ongoing recovery and how the faith, spirit, and culture of an indomitable people revived the city that care for God. And we even talked presidential politics. Here's my exclusive with Mary Madeline. Now, Mary, you and James moved back here in 2008 in the midst of the reconstruction and, and really the Katrina mess. Mm -hmm. Why did you decide to move back here of all places? Because you know what it means to miss New Orleans, right, Raymond? I got yeah. married here. I wanted to get married here. There's something enchanting about the place. We wanted to raise our children here, and we quickly got caught up in the recovery. Has Katrina changed this city? Yes. Oh. Huh. In almost spiritual ways, there was an, I don't want to say an exclusivity, but there was a division about it. Uptown, downtown, mm -hmm. lakeside. You know, there's a lot of different divisions which you would have had to have known the history to understand how deep, really mm -hmm. deep they went. And the, the necessity of recovery brought everybody together for common purpose, I admit, hence the spiritual element of it. Mm. The whole was greater than the sum of the parts and we never looked back. Mm. How has it changed, do you think, the faith of the people here? And how important was that faith, particularly the Catholic faith, to undergird that rebuilding and the, and the restoration of the city? Indispensable. I mean, it was here. Other than the birth of my children in my agnostic days, this, the first thing I remember thinking about New Orleans, we moved here, was this is the face of God. Everywhere I turned, there was evidence of the hand of God. Everything that had been done was done through the church or through some ancillary of the, of the church. And to this day, in subsequent weather events, um, the archbishop is the go-to guy and he congregates, no pun intended, all the other denominations. But it's the faith, it, the essence of despair is the worst of sins. There was despair was not allowed and hope was ever present. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Every, look everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. Eighty-four percent of the residents here and in the adjoining parishes returned. Does that surprise you that so many people came back? Given the devastation, many of these people lost their homes, the neighborhoods. It doesn't surprise me. One time we had a, a cabbie who said he he got he was living with his mother in Houston or Baton Rouge, or thanks to all these beautiful places that took care of people for so long. And he, it was Monday, and he wanted red beans and rice. And he just started crying. I, I gotta get me some red beans and rice. He came back. I mean, there, this is not a place. It's not a physicality. It is a spiritual sensation. The food, the art, the music. The people, the history, it's so different. It's, a, it's its own little cosmos. There is something so compelling about this special place of Earth. Look, Mary, in this city, $71 billion of federal money was spent to help bring New Orleans back. Does the conservative in you kind of recoil at that kind of federal initiative and investment, even though it's your hometown now? The conservative being, which I am a constitutional conservative, does not, is not against government. It's not anti-government. You know you're Jefferson, you're Hamilton, and you're Adams, and you're Madison. And, this, and the question put to them was, 
what, what is the core role of government, what is the scope of that role, and at what level, if it is the role of government. I think since the feds messed it up in the first place because it was the levees that broke, not the storm that did it, that yes, mm -hmm. they had a responsibility. My conservatism would say much of this money should, have, should stay here in the first place and not go back to D.C. and worth it. But now the uh, Corps of Army Engineers is here and they're redoing the stuff that only they can do because they get an economy of the scale. pumping systems and reinforcing Yes, but I, I take your point because it hasn't been government money. It's been human capital mm -hmm. and coming together that brought the city back. It's still happening. I mean, we, we were in oh, Lakeview right. yesterday. It's a construction zone. New houses are going up. The streets are being repaved. I mean, it, 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 it is ongoing. Do you think Mitch Landrieu goes too far, the mayor of New Orleans, when he says the rebuilding is over? Is the rebuilding really over? If he says that, what he really means is the regeneration continues. We're not the city we were. He aspires, and we all have joined mm -hmm. him in inspiring to be the city that we could be, should be, will be. We are a prototype for urban renewal. We'll constantly be rebuilding in the sense that it's the innovative capital of the country. It's Silicon South. Mm -hmm. It's a number one startup. It's a number one entrepreneurial capital. It's a number one brain gain. It's young people are flocking here. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you can go through all the, the metrics, but it is, it is remaking. It's remaking in the 21st century what a beautiful urban polity, if you will, mm -hmm. since we've Got a little Cicerone in here. <laughs> like when um, you slip that in. It, that's what it is. That's what it could be, and it is possible. It gives me hope for our national politics, actually. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about politics. Talk to me about the Trump effect. What effect has he had on this race? There are still some of our friends in Washington who say, this is a sideshow. This is a distraction. He's going to get knocked out any day now. Let's not pay any attention to him. Well, contrary to and with respect for my, my friends in, in uh, Washington, I've been thumping for Trump because his, it's not so much his message, which is all over the board, it's his manner. Mm -hmm. It is his manner. If I may use this term, um, he has testicular fortitude. Yeah. I, as a conservative, why are we defensive? Why are we apologetic? There's empirical evidence that these policies work there are many in the field who have applied these policies in their states, and, and they've worked. And we have a roadmap. It's the Constitution. So he, I love his take no prisoners attitude. But mm. having said that, I really am impressed with this field. There are so many candidates who either are constitutional scholars, have performance records that it far exceed the, the uh, recovery of the national government since. Mm -hmm since the economic collapse, who are job creators, who've done it without raising taxes. Speak to me for a moment about what's happened here educationally. The public school system collapsed in the wake of Katrina. Everything was suddenly charter schools. There are only six non-charter schools here in the city. Is this a model for the rest of the nation, given graduation rates are up and you see a real involvement on the parental level you don't see in other places? No. Of course it is. Empirical data would scream that it is. Mm -hmm. And all the other cities that ha know that it is, the parents that know that it is, are stopped, not because they think a better systems would work better for the kids, because it's political unions, mm -hmm. uh, corruption in his own backyard, President. Obama stopped the voucher system when the parents there are screaming for it. Rahm Emanuel in Chicago wants it. Every place wants it. The parents want it because it works. Hmm. Graduation oh. rates, first-gen college, I mean, again, prototype for urban renewal. Hmm. You know, other people look at New Orleans and they're astounded when they visit here. In fact, I was just talking to, to someone from, who lived in another state, moved here recently. He said, I, I can't believe how the races get along here. Why does that work? Races here get along well. This is the land, as French originally. They, there were many Creoles of color, free people. It was the reconstruction that kind of tore the place apart, but Really, people 
share the same value system. This is a global community, so everybody, everybody does get along, but the larger narrative of the, the grievance industry, the victimology industry, is, and I give Mitch credit for accelerating that. He said in his election, if you want to be divisive, get out of here. If you want to mm -hmm. bring a good idea, come on in. Mm -hmm. The sense of place, the value of the music, the food, the tradition, the culture, the history, as a community, it seems it's worth so much that everybody's willing to put aside those normal divisive things that tear the rest of the country apart because this matters and unless we do this together and preserve it, we'll lose it. While we're on this topic, what do you make of the effort to um, remove some of these Confederate markers in the city? Of the I'm world? opposed to it on the grounds that history is history and denying history helps, it does not help the future at all. I would rather keep the markers and mark our progress somehow. Right now at the World War II Museum, one of the most visited museums in the world, it has a display on the uh, fight for the right to fight. Mm -hmm. It's the, uh, the uh, black soldiers in World War II. So, and also I tend to, as a his historian, there's no, no pun intended, black and white. People are complicated characters. Our yeah. founders were geniuses. They had flaws. There is something more to this, way more to the South, where an overwhelming supermajority had, did not have slaves, did not mm -hmm. condone slavery. There was a different heritage to the South as there was to New England and the 13 mm -hmm. colonies, and I don't want to go back into history, sure. but to deny that part of the heritage and to make uh, a symbol of hatred, exclusively hatred, I find, um, I find the I find evil's hand in that. When people come to visit, when they ask you why are you still here, and why should I come, you would say what to them? Actually, at this point in my unchristian voice, I say, "Don't come, no, we're fine." No, when we <laughs> we first, you know, because we knew each other fair when we yeah. left Washington. Mm -hmm. um, all my friend, my best friends, everyone said she'll be back. Uh -huh. She'll be back in six months. Nobody could believe it. Then it's six months and a year, then six years. And then they come down here, they all, now everybody comes down here, all of Washington, there's like a direct flight now. <laughs> and they come there, they think it's like some magic princess. I have some magic princess life. Yes, I mean, it's just, it's, people think coming here is, is dreamlike, the jazz fest, or well, you're not come for nothing. Yeah. There's always something going on. They, I think we are live, living on some magic carpet, which I feel like every day too. I've been here forever and I still, the night blooming jasmines, the sound of the, the streetcar, the church bells. I mean, I never, every single day is a complete experience. Yeah, and the people are wonderful. The people are Well, of course, I mean, you've been to a few parties here. Yeah, I have, <laughs> and they are. Be sure to join us next week as we travel to New Orleans for Katrina 10 years later with New Orleans Archbishop Gregory Amond, Louisiana Senator David Vitter, Mayor Mitch Landrieu, and many more.